So I'm on a bit of a roll here with making videos. So I thought I would at least start with uh, this next video that I wanted to make on Maxwell's equations. Now, I just recently read this paper called um, Trouble with Maxwell's Electromagnetic Theory. Can fields induce other fields in a vacuum? And this is by was written by a guy named Yonel Denyu. Now you'll recognize him as the guy that made the video that I showed you of the um, spinning cylinders in water. And he showed that when you spin two cylinders in water, whether you spin them axially or side by side, they behave very much like um, magnets. And so this is where the idea of fluid dynamics um, mimicking magnetic fields um, came, came to me, came to my mind. And so that's what got me thinking about fluid dynamics in general, being able to mimic um, all, the, all the phenomena in nature. So here we're going to uh, review this paper. What I'm going to do is I'm going to review this paper. Uh, this might be a fairly long video, but I think this is a very important one uh, for people that really want to try and understand Maxwell's equations because after I read this paper, I really felt like I understood Maxwell's equations. And and there's something wrong with Maxwell's equations, and, and, and this is what helped me understand Maxwell's equations, was trying to understand what's wrong with Maxwell's equations. And so I'm going to read the abstract here. So the purpose of this article is to point out that Maxwell's electromagnetic theory, believed by a majority of the scientists as a fundamental theory of physics, is in fact built on an unsupported assumption and on a faulty method of theoretical investigation. So there's something wrong. The result is that the whole theory cannot be considered reliable, nor its conclusions accurate descriptions of reality. In this work, it is called into question whether radio waves, i.e. light, traveling in a vacuum, are indeed composed of mutually inducing electric and magnetic fields. So, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, review sections of this paper and I'm going to, I have written down, I've taken notes and written down um, key sections of the paper and, and I've paraphrased some of the uh, things that he said in, in my own words, but for the most part I'm saying what he's saying in this paper. Okay, so um, in this work I will argue, Yonel argues, that the idea of electric and magnetic fields inducing each other without the mediation of electric charges is false because there is no experimental basis or there's no experimental evidence of this. Pure electric fields, varying or not, are not known to produce pure magnetic fields in regions of space where electrical charges do not exist. So if there are regions in space where electrical charges do not exist, we cannot expect there to be um, magnetic and electric fields. So in a similar manner, pure magnetic fields varying or not are not known to produce pure electric fields in regions of space where electrical charges do not exist. It is only through the mediation of electric charges and currents, charges in motion, that these phenomena can happen. <clears throat> what, what produces radio waves is known. We know, we know that rapidly changing electric currents in a conductor create radio waves. What is not known with certainty is how exactly radio waves are generated from these changing electric currents, how the waves detach themselves from the antenna, and what radio waves are really doing when they're traveling through space. These, he contends, are the problems still open for argument, and they will be discussed here. His alternative explanation is that radio waves in vacuum are simply mechanical waves in the ether, which is what Jeff Yi and I are trying to prove with, uh, with his uh, wave energy theory. Okay, 
So uh, radio waves in a vacuum are simply mechanical waves in the ether filling the vacuum and produced by charges. You can call them electrons if you want to. Surging in the antenna. So charges surging in the antenna create radio waves. This view contradicts that purporting er, the proportion that radio waves and light are composed of electric and magnetic fields that oscillate and induce and create each other in the vacuum. Okay, so um, the experimental evidence uh, does not support this. So this article, the paper that I'm reviewing, is about Maxwell's theory and about the fact that it contains faulty methods of theoretical investigation and claims unsupported by experiment. So the claims he makes of the you know electric field creating magnetic field, magnetic field creating electric field is unsupported by experiment because no experiment has ever proved this. Mainstream science considers these matters settled and beyond question. And he does not expect the greatest interest in this uh, form of, of this uh, work from professional scientists, which is unfortunate because uh, science should be about, you know, investigating and reinvestigating um, these ideas. So he says, I consider it my duty as an educator, and I personally consider it my duty as a um, an educator towards science itself and towards the present and the future. So it's our duty to investigate this and to present any findings that we have that are contrary to standard thinking. Okay, so let's talk about radio waves. Radio waves can be produced artificially by making a current oscillate in a transmitting aerial antenna. And here is a picture of uh, an antenna. Okay, here's a picture of an antenna, and this is an oscillator. Okay, so um, consider an oscillator with a connected transmission line, and suppose to and suppose that the transmission line is bent as shown in this figure. Okay, the charges moving along A and B. Okay, are forced up to A during one half of the cycle and then down to B during the second part of the cycle. The charge therefore oscillates between A and B. This accelerating charge radiates energy in the form of electromagnetic waves, radio waves. In contrast, charges moving in a line with a steady speed create a static magnetic field and no electromagnetic wave is radiated. This accelerating charge radiates energy in the form of electromagnetic waves. So in order to emit electromagnetic waves, the charges need to be accelerating. They can't just move, be moving at constant motion. Constant motion can create a magnetic field, but it does not create electromagnetic waves. You need accelerating charges in order to have that phenomenon. So, creating an electromagnetic wave. An electromagnetic wave can be created by passing an alternating current through a wire as shown in this figure. Waves created in this way are called radio waves. James Maxwell found that it was um, not the moving charge that caused the magnetic field, but the changing electric field that caused the charges to move. This explains how electromagnetic waves can travel through a vacuum. The changing fields induce each other, according to Maxwell. Maxwell also calculated the speed of the waves in the vacuum as, approx as the speed of light. This value is exactly the speed of light, and he concluded that light, therefore, was an electromagnetic wave. So, here we find, for the first time, two statements that seem to be inconsistent with each other. So in what was just described up here, okay, there are two ideas that seem to be inconsistent with each other. An electromagnetic wave can be created by passing an alternating current through a wire. Okay, waves created in this way are called radio waves. And then later on they say Maxwell found that it was not the moving charge that caused the magnetic field, 
but the changing electric field that caused charges to move. Thus, the textbook tells the student something new, that a changing electric field generates a changing magnetic field. But is this true? Can a field produce another field? The textbook says that this was found by Maxwell, that this was true. But did Maxwell prove what the textbook says he found? Sadly, the answer turns out to be no. Not only that Maxwell did not prove it by any experiment, but nobody has ever proved this experimentally in the last 150 years. What Maxwell did was a mathematical manipulation, which we will discuss later. Why is this important? It's important because Maxwell's finding is then used to explain why electromagnetic waves can travel through the vacuum or even exist in a system of electric and magnetic fields in such regions of space where there are no electric charges whatsoever. The explanation is the changing fields induce each other. It is meant that after being created by the original charges that oscillated in the antenna, the electric and magnetic fields continue to create and induce each other and exist even in regions of space far away from the antenna where there are no electrical charges at all. In the following section, I will argue that this picture is inaccurate. So, in closing this section and before we discuss what mathematical manipulation Maxwell did and why he did it, there is an obvious fact that shows that electromagnetic waves are not produced by changing electric fields. Look at the antennas that we use. They are all conductors. If the primary source of radio waves would be the varying electric fields, which would then induce magnetic fields, which would then in turn induce new electric fields, okay, uh, further away and so on, we would, we, um, we would use for our antennas huge capacitors and not conductors. Our antennas would look like two huge metal plates separated by a dielectric air, for example, and connected to a source of oscillating high voltage. But this is not the case in practice. Even since the times of Hertz and Marconi, radio waves have been produced by discharges, by sparks between the knobs of the induction coil. Okay. All past experimentation comes to demonstrate that if an electric current is not made to move violently in a conductor, no radio waves can be released into space. So, Long story short, only moving charges can generate a magnetic field, and only accelerating charges can generate electromagnetic waves, right? There's no such thing as a field creating a field. A field is a mathematical um, construct anyways. What is a field? No one can explain what a, what a field is. Um, or no one can uh, define what a field is, but really in reality, a field is a... It's a mathematical construct where you assign a, a vector, a value to every point in quote unquote space um, to, um, you know, to model forces in a region of space. So I'm going to say this one more time. Only moving charges can generate a magnetic field and only accelerating charges can generate electromagnetic waves. And that's it.